Rivian's an interesting company. They're sort of number two in the U.S. as being an EV only maker. They have the new R2 SUV coming out soon. They are already at 100,000 pre-orders for that. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. No, it's a big number. They've introduced some drastic cost-cutting measures. Over 100 steps from the battery making process, 50 components from the body shop, and 500 parts from design have been eliminated. That's a lot of parts. So they lost $1.4 in quarter one. Well, this table is kind of eye-opening. They were losing $139,000 per vehicle. Now, they're not even selling a vehicle for that much. Hi, I'm David with EV World News, and I'm here today with engineer Mike Herzog. How's it going, Mike? Doing great, David. Glad to be here. Anyways, let's start out talking about Rivian. So Rivian um, just put out its quarter two 2024 earnings. And I, I've seen a few articles about this. Some saying, hey, they lost a billion dollars. Others like this one says, the report's defining earnings with profitability in sight. And it's really kind of funny. So I've seen some different spin on this topic. And Rivian's an interesting company because while they're sort of number two in the U.S. as being an EV only maker, they've not been making money but they they've recently had that substantial investment from Volkswagen or it's a continuing project it's it's going to be a multi-year project but they you know they also have the investment from Amazon that they're making all the vans for and then on top of that you know they have some Saudi money and some other things and it just seems they they've got a lot going on from they have the new R2 SUV coming out soon and uh, they I think they are already at 100,000 pre-orders for that oh wow Oh yeah, no, it's it's a, it's a, it's a big number. It's a really big number of pre-orders for their vehicles. Rivian for second quarter delivered 13,790 vehicles, which was slightly up from the first 3 months of the year. But one of their plants in Normal, Illinois, production slipped from 17,500 in quarter 4 of last year to 13,980 in quarter 1, but only 9,600 in the second quarter. And that was due to a planned shutdown. So that affected their numbers a little bit too. But they've introduced some drastic cost-cutting measures, including manufacturing upgrades and supplier contracts. Over 100 steps from the battery-making process, 50 components from the body shop and 500 parts from design have been eliminated. That's a lot of parts to eliminate and steps in the in the manufacturing process. I mean that that's like a big deal, right? I mean that's that's a complete engineering streamline you know, production. That's one hundred steps from the battery making process were eliminated. That's that's a lot. With and now they're making their own in house drive units. They cut forty seven percent of the cost compared to its original quad motor. So they lost $1.4 in quarter one, but expects to achieve its first positive gross profit by the end of the year. Now, gross profit would mean they're not factoring in company overhead. So like executive salaries, administrative salaries, they're only factoring the cost of making those vehicles. So they expect to actually be turning a profit per vehicle sometime later by the end of this year. Expected to report a loss of $1.17 per share on revenue of $1.18 billion. So we'll see where that kind of plays out. But I like the, the first part of that news because I'm, a, I'm still waiting for it. And it sounds like it's coming in. I call it innovation with a lowercase i. There's innovation with, with an uppercase i. That's, that's a new battery technology. I mean, shoot, that's EVs themselves uh, moving into this space. But that lowercase i is just its process improvement. You know, it's it's that, that whole supply chain manufacturing process that internal combustion vehicles have got down pat. You know, that's Henry Ford figured that one out um, and, and started that process going. But in the EV space, it's that lowercase i where it's just people are learning from making these things. Uh, they're learning by doing as they're going along. And we're going to continue to see those those efficiencies and cost cutting improvements and measures. And that's just that's just doing business. You know, that's streamlining processes and figuring things out that I, I hope we start to see more and more of in this space. Well, this table is kind of eye-opening. So in quarter three of 22, they were losing $139,000 per vehicle. Now, they're not even selling a vehicle for that much. I was going to say, that, that doesn't sound good. Lucid's even worse than this. Wow. Okay. But a lot of this is because they're setting up facilities 
and they're manufacturing and they have all this cost to be able to produce the vehicle. Well, they yeah, they have huge, huge upfront capital expenditures to, to get those things in place that they're still working through. So each quarter, that number keeps changing. 124,000 to 67, to 32,000, to 30,000, and then it went back up. And I think this is because they opened another plant. 43,000, to 38,000, it's back down to 32,000. So they're currently losing $32,000 for every vehicle they make. Now, I was kind of under the impression they made money on the vans. And so I'm wondering how that averages out when they factor in the Amazon vans. Because when we look at Rivian, this this is really what we see. We see like this R1T, R1S, the upcoming R2 and R3 vehicles, but they don't show the Amazon van. Which is like their their workhorse, right? Yeah. I mean, that's that's their life raft. That's going to keep them through until they, they figure out these production models. Yeah, I'm just saying that they show that, but they don't show the other. So I, I'd really be curious how that breaks out. But it, it, it's kind of good news. You know, like I was saying, the Volkswagen thing obviously w- was a huge deal for Rivian. And I, and I think they're going to be in, in good shape long term. I think they're going to be a stable stock. And it's it's anecdotal, but you talk to people, they seem to like them. I will say people I talk to are more excited about the Rivian pickup than the Cybertruck. Like, yeah, it's, I'm kind of interested in that. What does that look like? And what is, what is it? So they, they've got that working in their side that they have, I think they still have good brand recognition. They still have a positive brand image. And uh, hopefully that that keeps them afloat until they get, get a lot of that other stuff pinned down and get their, their production up to where, where they expect it to be. Hi, I'm David with EV World News. If you like this video, then please press the like button. If you like the content and would like to see more videos on electric vehicles, then please hit the subscribe button. If you have some feedback for us, please let us know in the comments. Have a great day.